Part one of Tristram and Isolt by Matthew Arnold. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com. Tristram and Isolt by Matthew Arnold. Part one. Tristram. Is she not come? The messenger was sure. Prop me upon the pillows once again. Raise me, my page. This cannot long endure. Christ, what a night! How the sleet whips the pain! What lights will those out to the northward be? The lanterns of the fishing boats at sea. Soft, who was that? Stands by the dying fire. Isolt. Ah, not the Isolt I desire. What night is this so weak and pale, Though the locks are yet brown on his noble head, Propped on pillows in his bed, Gazing seaward for the light Of some ship that fights the gale On this wild December night? over the sick man's feet is spread a dark green forest dress a gold harp leans against the bed ruddy in the fire's light i know him by his harp of gold famous in arthur's court of old i know him by his forest dress the peerless hunter harper knight tristram of lioness what lady is this whose silk attire gleams so rich in the light of the fire the ringlets on her shoulders lying in their flitting lustre vying with the clasp of burnished gold which her heavy robe doth hold her looks are mild her fingers slight as the driven snow are white but her cheeks are sunk and pale is it that the bleak sea gale beating from the atlantic sea on this coast of brittany nips too keenly the sweet flower is it that a deep fatigue hath come on her a chilly fear passing all her youthful hour spinning with her maidens here listlessly through the window bars gazing seawards many a league from her lonely shore-built tower while the knights are at the wars or perhaps has her young heart felt already some deeper smart of those that in secret the heart-strings writhe leaving her sunk and pale though fair who is this snowdrop by the sea i know her by her mildness rare her snow-white hands her golden hair i know her by her rich silk dress and her fragile loveliness the sweetest christian soul alive isolt of brittany isolt of brittany but where is that other isolt fair that proud first isolt cornwall's queen she whom tristram's ship of yore from ireland to cornwall bore to tintagel to the side of king mark to be his bride she who as they voyaged quaffed with tristram that spiced magic draught which since then for ever rolls through their blood and binds their souls working love but working teen there were two isolts who did sway each her hour of tristram's day but one possessed his waning time the other his resplendent prime behold her here the patient flower who possessed his darker hour isolt of the snow-white hand watches pale by tristram's bed she is here who had his gloom where are thou who hadst his bloom one such kiss as those of yore might thy dying night restore does the love draught work no more art thou cold or false or dead isolt of ireland loud howls the wind sharp patters the rain and the knight sinks back on his pillows again he is weak with fever and pain and his spirit is not clear hark he mutters in his sleep as he wanders far from here changes place and time of year and his closed eye doth sweep over some fair unwintry sea not this fierce atlantic deep as he mutters brokenly the calm sea shines loose hang the vessel's sails before us are the sweet green fields of wales and overhead the cloudless sky of may ah would i were in those green fields at play not pent on shipboard this delicious day tristram i play thee of thy courtesy reach me my golden cup that stands by thee but pledge me in it first for courtesy ha dost thou start are thy lips blanched like mine child tis no water this tis poisoned wine is salt ah sweet angels let him dream keep his eyelids let him seem not this fever wasted white thinned and paled before his time but the brilliant youthful knight in the glory of his prime sitting in the gilded barge at thy side thou lovely charge bending gaily over thy hand ye salt of ireland and she too that princess fair if her bloom be now less rare let her have her youth again let her be as she was then let her have her proud dark eyes and her petulant quick replies let her sweep her dazzling hand with its gesture of command and shake back her raven hair with the old imperious air as of old so let her be that first isolt princess bright chatting with her youthful knight as he steers her over the sea quitting at her father's will the green isle where she was bred and her bower in ireland for the surge-beat cornish strand where the prince whom she must wed dwells on loud tintagel's hill high above the sounding sea 
and that golden cup her mother gave her that her future lord gave her that king mark and she might drink it on their marriage day and for ever love each other let her as she sits on board ah sweet saints unwittingly see it shine and take it up and to tristram laughing say sir tristram of thy courtesy pledge me in my golden cup let them drink it let their hands tremble and their cheeks be flame as they feel the fatal bands of a love they dare not name with her wild delicious pain twine about their hearts again let the early summer be once more round them and the sea blue and over its mirror kind let the breath of the may wind wandering through their drooping sails die on the green fields of wales let a dream like this restore what his eye must see no more chill blows the wind the pleasance walks a drear madcap what jest was this to meet me here were feet like those made for so wild a way the southern winter parlour by my fay had been the likeliest trysting place to-day tristram nay nay thou must not take my hand tristram sweet love we are betrayed our plan fly save thyself save me i dare not stay one last kiss first tis vain to horse away ah sweet saints his dream doth move faster surely than it should from the fever in his blood all the springtime of his love is already gone and past and instead thereof is seen its winter which endureth still tintagel on its surge-beat hill the pleasance walks the weeping queen the flying leaves the straining blast and that long wild kiss their last and this rough december night and his burning fever pain mingle with his hurrying dream till they rule it till he seem the pressed fugitive again the love desperate banished night with a fire in his brain flying over the stormy main whither does he wander now haply in his dreams the wind wafts him here and lets him find the lovely orphan child again in her castle by the coast the youngest fairest chatelaine that this realm of france can boast our snowdrop by the atlantic sea is salt of brittany and for through the haggard air the stained arms the matted hair of that stranger knight he'll start there gleamed something which recalled the tristram who in better days was lancelot's guest at joyous guard welcomed here and here installed tended of his fever here haply he seems again to move his young guardian's heart with love in his exiled loneliness in his stately deep distress without a word without a tear ah tis well he should retrace his tranquil life in this lone place his gentle bearing at the side of his timid youthful bride his long rambles by the shore on winter evenings when the roar of the near waves came sadly grand through the dark up the drowned sand or his endless reveries in the woods where the gleams play on the grass under the trees passing the long summer's day idle as a mossy stone in the forest depths alone the chase neglected and his hound couched beside him on the ground ah what troubles on his brow hither let him wander now hither to the quiet hours passed among these heaths of ours by the grey atlantic sea hours if not of ecstasy from violent anguish surely free all red with blood the whirling river flows the wide plain rings the dazed air throbs with blows upon us are the chivalry of rome their spears are down their steeds are bathed in foam up tristram up men cry thou moonstruck knight what foul fiend rides thee on into the fight above the din her voice is in my ears i see her form glide through the crossing spears Isolt! Ah he wanders forth again we cannot keep him now as then there's a secret in his breast which will never let him rest these musing fits in the green wood they cloud the brain they dull the blood his sword is sharp his horse is good beyond the mountains will he see the famous towns of italy and label with the blessed sign the heathen saxons on the rhine at arthur's side he fights once more with the roman emperor there's many a gay night where he goes will help him to forget his care the march the leaguer heaven's blithe air the neighing steeds the ringing blows sick pining comes not where these are ah what boots it that the jest lightens every other brow what that every other breast dances as the trumpets blow if one's own heart beats not light on the waves of the tossed fight if oneself cannot get free from the clog of misery thy lovely youthful wife grows pale watching by the salt sea tide with her children at her side for the gleam of thy white sail home tristram to thy halls again to our lonely sea complain to our forests tell thy pain all round the forest sweeps off black in shade but it is moonlight in the open glade and in the bottom of the glade shine clear the forest chapel in the fountain near i think i have a fever in my blood come let me leave the shadow of this wood ride down and bathe my hot brow in the flood mild shines the cold spring in the moon's clear light god 
tis her face plays in the waters bright fair love she says canst thou forget so soon at this soft hour under this sweet moon this salt ah poor soul if this be so only death can balm thy woe the solitudes of the green wood had no medicine for thy mood the rushing battle cleared thy blood as little as did solitude ah his eyelids slowly break their hot seals and let him wake what new change shall we now see a happier worse it cannot be is my page here come turn me to the fire upon the window panes the moon shines bright the wind is down but she'll not come to-night ah no she is asleep in cornwall now far hence her dreams are fair smooth is her brow of me she reeks not nor my vain desire i have had dreams i have had dreams my page would take a score years from a strong man's age and with a blood like mine will leave i fear scant leisure for a second messenger my princess art thou here sweet tis too late to bed and sleep my fever is gone by to-night my page shall keep me company where did the children sleep kiss them for me poor child thou art almost as pale as i this comes of nursing long and watching late to bed good night she left the gleam-lit fireplace she came to the bedside she took his hands in hers her tears down on her slender fingers rained she raised her eyes upon his face not with a look of wounded pride a look as if the heart complained her look was like a sad embrace the gaze of one who can divine a grief and sympathize sweet flower thy children's eyes are not more innocent than thine but they sleep in sheltered rest like helpless birds in the warm nest on the castle's southern side where feebly comes the mournful roar of buffeting wind and surging tide through many a room and corridor full on their window the moon's ray makes their chamber as bright as day it shines upon the blank white walls and on the snowy pillow falls and on two angel heads doth play turn to each other the eyes closed the lashes on the cheeks reposed round each sweet brow the cap close set hardly lets peep the golden hair through the soft opened lips the air scarcely moves the coverlet one little wandering arm is thrown at random on the counterpane and often the fingers close in haste as if their baby owner chased the butterflies again this stir they have and this alone but else they are so still ah tired madcaps you lie still but were you at the window now to look forth on the fairy sight of your illumined haunts by night to see the park glades where you play far lovelier than they are by day to see the sparkle on the eaves and upon every giant bough of those old oaks whose wet red leaves are jewelled with bright drops of rain how would your voices run again and far beyond the sparkling trees of the castle park one sees the bare heath spreading clear as day moor behind moor far far away into the heart of brittany and here and there locked by the land long inlets of smooth glittering sea and many a stretch of watery sand all shining in the white moonbeams but you see fairer in your dreams what voices are these on the clear night air what lights in the court what steps on the stair end of part one recorded by nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com